And this one month is a great opportunity. So, reciting the Quran, having a connection with the Quran is compulsory for every single Muslim. What is the minimum requirement for having a connection with the Quran before? Some say doing one khatr of the Quran at least in a year. Others say once in a month, etc., etc. But having this connection with the Quran, reciting the Quran, is compulsory for every single Muslim. How much we differ? So the least is one khatam a year. So this was the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the hikmah of this sharia, the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that in the month of Ramadan, since the shaitans are locked up, they're fasting during the day, there's rahmah coming up, so it will be easy for everyone to at least fulfill this obligation in the, in, 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 in the whole year. And even that being in this blessed month of Ramadan and in the state of salah. So, in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, during the time of the Sahaba, they used to do as many khatam of the Qur'an they could do in Taraweeh. Three, four, five, as many as they could. There are, there are Sahabas, Tabi'een, A'imma, who are known for doing khatam of the Qur'an every single night, throughout the year. So imagine how much khatam of the Qur'an they would do in Ramadan, in Taraweeh, and then in Tahajjud. So the people of um, Mecca, he said that they used to do taraweeh, they used to do so many khatams, as many as they could. And then after every four rakaat, they used to do the tawaf. They used to take a little break. After a long four rakaat, where they probably do one whole khatam of the Qur'an, then they would take a long break, people would do tawaf, etc., and then carry on all night. And the people of Medina, now to compete with, with the people of Mecca, they used to pray 40 rakaat taraweeh. So, now, Tarawi people used to pray different, different rakaats. The whole objective was to try and do as many khatam of the Qur'an as possible. So this is why, because the Sahaba, the Prophet wasallam, the Tabi'een in the month of Ramadan, there is a single Sahaba, single Tabi'een, which didn't do at least one khatam. And thus, the A'imah, the Fuqaha, when they are classifying all the different, different actions of Islam in the, in the science of fiqh, in the books of fiqh, they categorize doing one khatam of the Qur'an in Taraweeh as Sunnah Mu'akkada. Likewise, the Taraweeh of 20 raka'at, the A'imah in the books of fiqh, they made it Sunnah Mu'akkada. To pray 20 raka'at of Taraweeh, Sunnah Mu'akkada, extremely emphasized Sunnah. And how is this Sunnah established? When the Prophet wasallam orders the Ummah to do something, and then you see no Sahaba ever compromising it or missing it, that's a sign of it being compulsory or wajib. When you see it here and there, there are some exceptions, sometimes they miss it, etc. Then that be, that's a sign of it being Sunnah Mu'akkada. So Tarawi is something so important. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prayed with the Sahaba first night, second and third night, he didn't come out. And he said, I fear that Allah will make it compulsory upon you. That shows how important Tarawi is. And then after that, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Sahaba, the Aimma, the Salaf, no one's ever missed Taraweeh, <coughs> unless for necessities. And this is why, <coughs> this, the, the, uh, the approach of the Sahaba and the Salaf in regards to the Taraweeh, the Fuqaha later on, they classified 20 rakat Taraweeh as Sunnah Mu'akkada. So until today, until recent times, the last 50 years, throughout the entire Muslim world, whether you go to Tanzania, whether you go to Nigeria, Ethiopia, Somalia, Africa, Turkey, wherever in the world you may be, Russia, you go to an um, old village with a small mosque made out of mud, you will see that they are praying 20 rakat It was the common practice of the entire Muslim Ummah to pray 20 rakat That's what you see all four Imams. Whether you go to Morocco, Morocco or Maliki country, whether you go to a Shafi'i country, you will see the common standard, even amongst the most ignorant of the ignorant communities, where you're not going to have a single Ali, even they pray 20 rakat Why is that? Because this was the norm. So now this misunderstanding that we have, and this misunderstanding that is being propagated, people are taking advantage of this. Yes. There have been different opinions amongst the number of rakaat. And thus, when there's necessity, someone could miss Taraweeh. Someone could pray less. 
and the Salaf, the Aima, the Muslims before us, they, they understood this concept very well. And thus they didn't impose it upon anyone. They didn't say it's compulsory, someone had to miss it, someone had to do less. They never condemned it, they never criticized it because they knew it's not far, it's Sunnah. And there's some little um, uh, differences. But generally everybody's ambition, everybody's desire, um, uh, target was to try and do at least 20 rakat tarawih and do at least one khatam of the Qur'an in the month of Ramadan. And today we just take this very, very um, uh, weak opinion, the weakness of opinion, which was very rare amongst the Salaf, and we take advantage of this. And now we don't give any importance to tarawih. We don't even pray, we're busy fundraising, we're busy doing campaigning, we're busy on TV, watching TV, or whatever. And if we do, then we just pray in Rakat, we don't even do one of the Quran. So I will just conclude by saying, that hadith that normally they use in Bukhari, of Asha radiallahu anha reporting that ma kana nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yusalli fi Ramadan wa fi wafidayha akhtara min ihda ashara raka'ata. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never used to pray in Ramadan or outside Ramadan, in, in the night, more than 11 raka'ah. So this hadith, the ulama, they didn't, they did, even though it's sahih, but they didn't take that into consideration. Because the same Aisha radiallahu anhu narrates with other chains, other sahih hadith, with different, different narrations. Some 13 raka'ah, some 11 raka'ah, some 15 raka'ah. So therefore, there's confusion in that. And secondly, all the muhaddithin, the great, great experts of hadith, Abd ibn Hajar, Imam al Nawawi, etc. All those who've written comments of Sahih al Bukhari, they've written that this um, hadith they, is in the chapter of Qiyamul Lail. This hadith is regarding Qiyamul Lail, Tahajjud. And this is what Aisha Radha clearly said. Prophet never prayed in the month of Ramadan or outside the month of Ramadan. More than 11 rakat. So that shows she, she is talking about a particular salah which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to pray in Ramadan as well as outside Ramadan. But Tarawi, did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam pray outside Tarawi? He didn't. So this hadith is explicitly referring to a salah which he, he was praying in Ramadan and outside Ramadan. And that is tahajjud. In tahajjud, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, like you prayed um, um, 8 rakat, 12 rakat, in Ramadan, he used to pray that outside Ramadan. But as for Taraweeh, there are other hadith, which clearly show the Prophet uh, that the Taraweeh Sunnah is 20 rakah. And the most important thing is, Umar radiallahu in his time, with the ijma of all the Imams of the Sahaba, all the senior Sahaba, Ali radiallahu anhu, Uthman radiallahu anhu, Tarhat ibn Ubaidullah, Zubair ibn Awam, and all the name, Ibn Masud radiallahu anhu, all the greatest with the Sahabi, he gathered everybody and they all prayed to Tarakat, Taraweeh, and nobody objected to it. So there's ijma there. The Prophet sallallahu anhu followed the, the Salaf. This is the real meaning of following the Salaf. So when we compromise, first of all, we are depriving ourselves from praying, uh, reciting the uh, whole Quran in Salah. And secondly, we are you know, opposing the Sunnah and the way of the entire Salah. So my last appeal and request to everybody would be, yes, um, respect others' opinion, but doesn't mean we have to take advantage of that, doesn't mean we have to try and you know, uh, compromise. And um, if we were doing more practice, we should decrease in our practice. Right? We respect others' opinion, but we should try and follow what is the best, what the Sahaba did, what the Salaf did, what is most rewarding. That's common sense. 20 rakats is more rewarding than 8 rakats. It's common sense. Doing one khatam of the Quran is more rewarding than half of the khatam. So we should all aim